My name is Lawrence Grant. I work for Margate Primary Care Network. I'm their lead care coordinator. My role as lead coordinator uh, basically entails quite a few different things. Um, I work to support the multidisciplinary team in our primary care network. So a lot of the work that we do is about coordinating care and working together with social services, um, community nurses, secondary care, um, also with the hospitals and different voluntary and charity sectors. Um, so that's one element of my role. Another element of my role is that we do a lot of community development and what we call health population management. So in our four GP practices, which are North Down Surgery, The Limes, uh, Bethesda Medical Centre and Mockets Wood, we look at our patient demographic and we try and see if there are ways that we can improve care, basically to cater care and specific support to that, uh, to our population. Um, and then the sort of other bits of my role are that we manage, I manage a team of four social prescribing link workers, which link in quite well with social work students because some of their work is quite similar to what goes on in social services at the moment. So it's a lot of working to support an individual with what matters to them, personalising care and taking a holistic approach to a person's needs. Um, as well as that in our team, we've got a children's health and wellbeing navigator who works in my team to support children that are on a neurodevelopmental pathway, which basically means that they have been referred for assessments for a potential diagnosis of ADHD or autism. Um, and as well as that, he sort of manages them while they're on that referral pathway, because it can take some time. Um, families often need support. Children might need support in schools, nurseries. Um, so he works together with them. And then we have a learning disability care coordinator who is effectively a social prescriber, but working with patients that have diagnosed learning disabilities, and he will support them in a variety of different ways, but the main sort of function is to take into account all of their social care needs when they are having their annual health check assessment with the GP. So quite a lot of different things we do over here, um, but it ties in fairly well with social services and their social work. We work quite closely with them as it is anyway on the multidisciplinary team, um, and a lot of our staff sort of rely on each or rely on social services for support to care for an individual. In my, my team, um, we supported one social work student. Um, she's worked with all four of our social prescribers and both of our care coordinators and care navigators. Um, I know that there has been sort of a variety of different student nurses as well that have worked in primary care. And we also have trainee GPs that often come into the practices and stay with us for quite some time. Uh, I provided the lead support for the trainee social worker in my team um, from sort of day one. She came and uh, was shadowing myself. Um, and then we, we sent her out on home visits and into appointment clinics with the social prescribers to understand what they do as a job. Um, she also helped us with little bits of sort of administrative work at first, um, just to, so she could get an idea of the different processes that we have in terms of taking referrals, how we record data and how we support patients. Um, there was a lot of shadowing for her as well. It was a bit of a conscious effort to not overwhelm her with a lot of the work because it can be quite heavy going at times. Sometimes in social prescribing it can be um, quite nice and simple. It could be referring them on to like a lunch club, a befriending group, um, or to a different kind of activity to sort of overcome loneliness. Other times it can be quite heavy, um, particularly as we're in an NHS setting, a lot of the referrals we get are due to health conditions, both mental and physical. Um, so we didn't want to overburden her at first. We wanted her to sort of assimilate to the role, understand what it was going to entail. Um, and then eventually she started building up her own caseload of patients. She was making welfare calls to some of our older patients to ensure that they had everything and that they were okay at home. Um, coming out of COVID, there's been a lot of sort of welfare issues and a lot of loneliness issues, and some people don't have any support. So we gave her those patients to work with first. Um, because not because they're straightforward, but just because they're sort of nice ones to first get involved in. Um, and then develop the case load as time went on to some more sort of difficult cases, I suppose, um, and ones that take a little bit more uh, involvement from a social prescribing stance. So for myself, to be honest, I think having a social work student um, made me realise that a lot of processes need to be streamlined and made a little bit more straightforward. Um, with social uh, prescribing, it's still a fairly new thing for us. We had social prescribing set up since December 2019, but a lot of the time at the beginning of that role due to COVID, they were all involved in the vaccination process, as was myself. Um, so we didn't have all of the processes and protocols up running how we would like them to be. 
Um, eventually over time we managed to set those up, but when we had the social work student come in place, I realised that some of them did need improving. Um, it also kind of just gave us a different perspective on what we do as, as a job, because each day we would meet with the social work student, ask how she'd been getting on um, and what she'd learned throughout the day really. And it was nice to get that sort of unbiased perspective of someone that was learning on the job um, to sort of advise me and the team of how we could improve our practice. I think um, a social, I think that a social work student can benefit from working within a team like ours. Um, I don't think it's necessarily needed to have a GP or a registered professional that can supervise the individual. Some of the work that care coordinators, care navigators, social prescribers, whatever you want to call them, some of the work that they do has been put in place because it's a different kind of work. It's in, in general practice, I think it's one in four appointments for a patient come in because of social reasons, not because of issues with their health. And sometimes the best people to deal with those aren't the clinical ones. They are people like myself or other people that are similar minded that we're really here due to personal skills, being able to empathize and really wanting to help people wherever you can. Um, I think because of that, we all learn from each other. There's a lot of similar minded people. I mean, generally in the NHS, everybody wants to help anyway. So you've got that typical kind of person that's there to you know, always be looking to support and looking to go that extra mile. Um, and there's a good network of people like myself in our four practices and we all work quite closely together. So there's not really ever a point where you won't feel supported. So the placement was 12 weeks long and I think it was a good amount of time for a social work student to get embedded within the practices. Um, in our PCM, there's four different practices, so it can take time to get to know each of the people that you need to know to help you best do your job. So that can go through secretaries, GPs and nurses um, and frailty coordinators. So in each practice, you've got to understand what they do and what their roles are. Um, I think it's a good amount of time because it gives time to go through an induction process like you would with a routine member of staff um, and then give them the time to both find their feet and then eventually find their own way to best support patients on their caseload. We do have a framework that we'd like people to follow um, and that's in terms of using a template to make sure the right questions are being asked um, and then so we can measure patients and their well-being so we know how much of an improvement we've been making. But it's also important, I think, for an individual to be able to have time that they can learn themselves the best way to empathise with a patient and the best way that they can use their personal skills. I would recommend having social work students placed in primary care. I think it's quite new for primary care and primary care networks to be having these particular roles like care coordinators, like social prescribers. Um, and I think it would be a bit silly for us sometimes just to think that we know that we're doing it the best way because we don't, it's still early days. A social work student can come in um, and they've been studying and they've been learning their sort of trade, if you will, for quite some time and they can give um, somewhat of a different perspective as to how we're doing things. I feel personally that I learned quite a lot during that time that our student was with us um, and that helped me and my team to improve some of the ways that we work and in turn that obviously benefits patients. Um, it's also good to have someone that can you know, support the team in supporting patients because a lot of referrals can come in in a big bulk sometimes and it was quite useful to have an extra person around to support us with our work stream.